Imagine this. You walk into a medical exam room. It's super bright and freezing cold. As you lay back on that stiff leather table, the hairs on the back of your legs and neck stand up. You're more alone than you've ever been. Now the doctor's there, she's trying to make you feel safe and comfortable, but you know exactly what is about to happen. Poked, prod, pushed, pulled, torn down and rebuilt like a toy. But you're just an eight year old child born with a difference you never asked for. And then the doctor hits you with this, that by the age of 16, you have zero chance of walking. Now that dramatic story is a little difficult, but it's really a story about overcoming adversity. That message haunted me for many years. The doctor ran through the plain spoken and technical details of my condition. As she did so, the glances my mother and I shared were of sheer terror and fear. But that provoked us to figure it out because others could not see a future without pain and misery. In that exam room, I confronted the fact that my disability, cerebral palsy, was something I could never run from or hide. Cerebral palsy is a lot like a buffet. You have so many different effects and variations that it can be overwhelming. For context, my medical file was the size of a textbook by age eight. But the most important thing to realize here is that disability represents one aspect of a person's personality and lifestyle. How it relates to each individual is fundamentally different. For myself, I felt less than human. Not good enough for a job, a home, family, friends, relationships. But worst of all, I wasn't good enough for myself. And that cold hard smack of reality hit me when I awoke in a post-operation room in a half body cast, feeling confused, sad, scared, and definitely betrayed. You see, my legs were sealed in plaster and then returned to me in a completely unrecognizable state. And when that happened, my mind started to ask questions. If my body had to be fixed and corrected, how could I be good enough? And then my soul answered, you had to be fixed and corrected. You are not good enough. I was torn down to be rebuilt and I felt worthless in that moment. But this is my responsibility to rebuild despite being broken. And those first steps started in the hallway of my mother's home, which at times was my own personal hell. I hated that narrow, dark corridor. But that's where I learned accountability and ownership for the things that I could control in my life. You see, my exercise was very simple with my mother. She would hold out her hands. I would place my hands on top of hers. We would then walk down that hallway, turn around and walk right back. I was relearning how to walk from ground zero. I would set world records going from vertical to horizontal in milliseconds. Poof! just like that. But then time would stop and then the shock wave would hit. Radiating from my head to toe was such a horrible pain that my breath was literally forced from me. I was being burned alive and I wanted it to end and I didn't care how. To be even more clear, I wanted to die in that moment. Even now, falling is a regularity for my life that I must accept. But each fall was and is a way for me to hold myself accountable. As you realize these things, all of a sudden, despite it being brutal, it's empowering. Because frankly, I hated the taste of grass, concrete, and that dirty, musty carpet. So I was picking myself up. It became my decision, my choice, my journey to decide whether I would quit on that carpet or if I would claw my way up off the floor to stand tall once again. Now, let me be clear. That decision was not easy. In fact, it was the opposite because for 12 months I was confronting deep seated pain and anger from feeling inadequate. I dug my nails into that thinly textured wall to scrap for every single inch just to get vertical because I was desperate. 
The trial by fire had to end and I didn't care how. But every time I would stumble and fall backwards, I would get so pissed off and frustrated that I lost all sense of self and I welled up tears so badly that I couldn't even see straight. My expectations with reality were never in sync and it was degrading to my soul and myself. I was focusing on what I couldn't do versus the improvements that I was making in that hallway. I couldn't appreciate taking one small step without falling, let alone getting myself up off of that carpet. Now that time taught me two things about consistency. Number one, gradual effort and commitment builds up over time and has a snowball effect. Number two, despite my failures, quote unquote, and falling backwards, my mother's hands were always, always there to support me, no matter what. And I realized looking back on it, to have the privilege of her support was one of the most empowering and loving experiences I have ever had. And that's why consistency is so important to me because I learned to appreciate what I've earned versus what I already have. And also because despite the falls, I can always rise again and you can too. Post-operation, I often felt like a mutant, misunderstood. But that was my naivety as a young boy because I couldn't see the community that was contributing to get me out of my own hallway of hell. Countless hours were given by family, friends, doctors, clinicians, therapists, like those from Shriners Hospital. They were invested in a crazy young buck tooth boy. As I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm reminded of the surgeons that painstakingly spent hours rebuilding my bones. How my mother's hands felt as I went through the hallway. All the time, all of the resources that were given to my betterment and well-being. And since then, I've stopped feeling like a mutant, although it does come back every once in a while. But you know what? I'm loved, I'm accepted, and I'm worthy. So my loneliness has dissipated. And I've been compelled to pay it forward, give back, and serve others. Building a community doesn't just help others, it helps yourself. What I mean by that is when you love, when you care, when you support all of those around you and you give back, it has a way of cycling back to you. It is cyclical because building a place for others to belong builds a place for everyone. Now the community that I have built has led me to right here and now on the TEDx platform to share this message. I would say things have worked out so far, all things considered. Thank you.